uh, uh, Deborah Langsam, and I was at the convention in, um, it was called Bacon, it was out in Berkeley. That's where they first started talking about the medievals. And um, after they came back and started thinking about it on the East Coast, I was involved in a sort of minor way because I was pretty active in the local science fiction community and there was a tremendous amount of overlap. In fact, there was a, there was a strong effort to not have SCA events overlapping with science fiction conventions on the East Coast, such as uh, Lunacon and Boscone, because so many people were in both groups. <coughs> um, Lord L. Two Knives, Elliot Shorter, for example. And uh, um, somewhere about that time, Karayadoc moved to the East Coast, and um, he was around, so... That was, that was also part of it. Um, I've been interested in history and historical material for a very long time. And of course, in cooking. Cooking and baking were things that I liked a lot and I did a great deal of it. So when um, Plain Delight was first published, I heard about it. I was selling fanzines at the time, fan magazines about Star Trek. And I would have a table at science fiction conventions because otherwise you get unsold fanzine elbow. Very painful. Walking around and saying, do you want to buy this wonderful fan, fan story? So I had a table in the dealer's room. And having heard about Plain Delight, I said to one of my friends who was a bookseller handling regular science fiction, can't you buy this for me and get me <coughs> the discount? And he said, don't you know four other people who would like to have this book? You can do it yourself. And so I did. And then I found other books, like the ones that the Metropolitan Museum was publishing, To the King's Taste and To the Queen's Taste, as a kit with uh, little bottles of appropriate spices like cubebs and sandalwood that at that time were almost impossible to get hold of. So they had this nifty little kit with the book and the spices, and I would sell that. And it just sort of exploded. Well, it didn't explode. It came on gradually that I sold far fewer magazines and a lot more books. And at first I was giving people a 10% discount because I was so grateful that they were buying them. And then I realized how incredibly difficult it would be to find these books if I didn't have them. And I said, okay, you can pay me full price. And um, by the time I retired, I was handling about 600 different titles of historical cookbooks and costume books.